Greetings and welcome everyone! Today I have another special guest with me who's been doing reviews and analysis of MLP for far longer than I have. Please welcome Voice of Reason. Hello everypony! I'm on a different channel today! Seeing Applejack and Pinkie Pie as the focus of an episode is something that we really haven't seen before. In fact, the closest we have ever come to that was during the last roundup, and you really couldn't call that a Pinkie episode. Although it did bring us some fantastic reactions from her. I gotta say that seeing these two characters bouncing off of each other along with the rest of the Apple family was a real treat. As the episode begins, we see Twilight and Spike teaching Pinky about genealogy, and even though it may not be all that much, I can really appreciate seeing these characters talking about how genealogy can lead to some intriguing revelations. Which is followed up with Pinkie Pie being especially surprised when she learns that she's related to... Applejack? Hold on a second! <laughs> Well, isn't that a fun direction to take these characters? Of course, the Apples are quite excited to have Pinky as part of their family. Is it me, or is the way Pinky says, Hi, cousin! Incredibly creepy. However, despite everyone's excitement, Applejack is a little hesitant to celebrate before they find out for sure. So they begin their road trip to find Golden Delicious in order to check their family records. And then we come to Apples to the Core. I've been waiting for this song since July, and it did not disappoint. Though the song does seem a bit short, it is very fun, very upbeat, and fits the tone of the episode perfectly. I'm really enjoying the harmonies between the family members here, and for all the songs that have focused on Applejack, or even the whole of the Apple family, this one is by far my favorite. It gives most everyone a chance to shine. Except for Big Mac. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoy this song more than Racist Barn, particularly because it doesn't feel like a montage song. In addition, the song actually has a connection to the theme of remaining together despite the struggles that come with it. Pinky is still being her usual random self, but actually seems a little more subdued than the rest of the season thus far. She gets to have her fun, but at the same time is actually being a positive influence for the rest of the group. She's not just there to make quirky one-liners, but actually becomes a driving force for the plot, and even talks about some really inspiring messages. Pinkie Pie, when did you have time to make this? Applejack, when you're family, you make the time. I could already tell that Apple Bloom would lose the map when she starts playing with it, but this is turning out to be an interesting and relatable conflict. I must admit this episode is showing an even more relatable Apple family than any other episode I've seen thus far. We've seen many examples of their close bonds and even how they've overcome their struggles together, but now we get to see all of them showing their less patient and less forgiving sides. And that's a nice change, I must say. We may have seen many inspiring moments from their family throughout the series, but it's really good to see that they can be relatable as well. And Pinky's pictures here are hilarious. Now, this may be just my observations, but I think Natasha Levenger managed to fix Apple Family Reunion. My issue with the previous episode was the fact they only focused on retreading Applejack's issues instead of introducing the struggles of being a family. Here, they actually focus on the family as a whole and its struggles instead of just one pony dealing with all the problems. Another thing that I can really appreciate from the animators is how they keep putting in fun little tidbits that can be hard to miss during the first watch through. For example, the eagle shows up twice in this episode. First to grab the fish after it had grabbed the map, second to grab the duck, after it had the wheel stuck on its head. And then, less than a minute later, that same duck is shown to be flying with other ducks right before the Apple family goes over the waterfall. Now, I would say that when the Apple family starts apologizing to each other, it did feel a bit cliché. I was already starting to roll my eyes. That is, until Big Mac wants to take his chance to apologize and Granny Smith cuts him off. It's a bit of a running gag throughout the episode that Big Mac doesn't really get his chance to say much or be in the spotlight during the song, for that matter. I thought it was pretty clever to have Pinky as the voice of reason while still having her remain in character this episode. I like the idea of having some pony remain neutral as some sort of middle ground as an observer of the problem while still experiencing first hoof the situation. Episodes such as Fall With Their Friends, Green Is In Your Color, Castlemania, and today's episode display the character portrayal well. Golden Delicious's house is so chock full of cats and antiques, a sign of a hoarder. A really, really bad sign. Although I did find it funny when Golden Delicious blows on a cat, and it is made up of dust. 
Another fun little tidbit that the animators put in. Surprisingly, or maybe unsurprisingly, they leave the question of Pinky's relation to the Apple family open-ended. And honestly, I don't mind. If they had gone through this whole story only to find out that Pinky really wasn't part of the Apple family, I'm sure the episode would still have ended the same way. But leaving the question open-ended leaves a more satisfying conclusion, because finding an answer one way or the other would have been more predictable. I like that MLP continues to surprise us. I also enjoy the fact that Pinky may or may not be an Apple instead of going all the way to Golden Delicious's house for nothing. At first I thought they were going with a predictable story when they saw the bottom line was smudged. As a result, it still remained ambiguous through the end. I enjoy an ambiguous ending where the ending is satisfying but keeps the audience pondering, much like the endings to Inception, the Watchmen graphic novel, or the anime Durarara. We get a reprise of Apples to the Core, which is a lot of fun, and we get to see Applejack learning a lesson about how being a good family isn't about being perfect. It's about getting through the rough patches together. And honestly, I think it was fantastic that Pinkie Pie was the one teaching this lesson. We might have expected Applejack to know everything there is about good family relations, but this episode actually showed a bit of weakness to her character that didn't feel a bit out of place. In fact, all of the Apple family shows a bit of weakness, but the whole conflict felt natural and believable. A great setup, a great resolution, and a great moral all rolled into one. This episode had a lot of good laughs and even some good heart. Another job well done for the writers. In fact, considering that this is a brand new writer to the series, I'd say that Natasha Levenger has shown a very good understanding of these characters and what makes a good story. This episode confirms the new writers are comfortable in writing these characters we've known since Season 1, while improving upon past seasons' faults. The story manages to improve upon the ideas of Apple Family Reunion. Pinky and the Apple Family are completely believable in the situation. The animation was okay, but the song was great and had a connection to the theme. The story was full of humor and heart and had a great moral. As a result, I will give Pinky Apple Pie 3.5 stars out of 4. It is definitely a much-needed, light-hearted episode. Well, voice, I'm glad to be getting some added perspective on these reviews. I hope that putting together your thoughts on the same day you watched the episode wasn't too much for you. Not at all. This is definitely a new and refreshing experience. Kinda like today's episode. Now we would like to hear from each of you. Do you think that Applejack and Pinkie Pie made for a good story together? Do you think that leaving the question of whether Pinkie really is part of the Apple family as open-ended was a good choice? Do you think that they'll ever be mentioning this possibility ever again? We would like to hear your thoughts on Pinky Apple Pie, and here's to looking forward to the next episode that puts focus on the Apple family. I am Dr. Wolf, and I look forward to hearing from you. Although, there is one more thing that I'm curious about. What do you suppose everyone saw in that cave that made them so afraid? I think we all know what was in the scariest cave in all of Equestria. <laughs>